Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Bird Song. It is Saturday and I am out in the workshop about to do a collage. I wanna show you something really cool first. Let's see if you can see it. It's not in the journal, but I'm gonna open this up to give me some flat space to work on. This is an old photograph that I found while out thrifting. And when I first looked at it and bought it, all I saw was the walkway through the woods. This morning, I was straightening up and I had my box of old photos. And when I opened it, this, this fairy, this woodland creature, this lady just spoke to me and jumped out at me in a way that I have never seen before. And she is so clear to me. I don't know if you can see her, but it looks like there is a lady leaning over the pathway. She has a long dress that's just part of the foliage the shadows and it looks like in her left hand she's holding a wand and then reaching around with her right arm as if to like strike or protect it looks like she is holding this really tall it's a tree obviously this is a tree that is that has fallen and it looks like she is almost bending over that for support i could not stop seeing this and i I want to try to to paint it. I printed it a little bit bigger. She even has a face. It, it looks really pretty. Now, in case you can't see it, <laughs> I did a really quick sketch with a black marker or a black pen just so you can see the outline. This is terrible. I, the more I added to it, the more I thought, oh, I should just throw it away. But I think you can see at least what I'm talking about. Um, the hair, the head is definitely not right. I still see her face in there and I have it, I have it all wrong on this one or not all wrong, but somewhat, it's not, it's not what I see here. And yet I think you can see what I'm talking about. Things like that are so amazing to me. So whoever took that had a woodland creature along the walk with them, maybe leading the way or protecting them. Who knows? But tell me if you can see that, that picture. If you saw it before I showed you what I saw, or if you see it after I pointed it out. Okay, we're gonna make a collage today, and I'll show you the process I used last time for the collage. I chose a few pieces of paper. Now this I've already put down. This is a, a little bingo um, card, uh, a thin one, which I really like because I was able to, to tear it into pieces and put it on the page. And my scraps of paper have the colors. We've got yellow, green, and pink as the main colors. So I'm just going to tear up some bits of paper. We don't want everything to have a straight edge. So let's tear some that are, you know, kind of rough on, on each side. I love the flower. This is why it's a good reason to save your scraps of paper. Over time, I have become better at organizing the things I wanna use. Uh, sometimes you can organize things and even though everything might be in a perfect little place, when you get ready to work, you realize that things are so organized and so put away that you, don't, you can't lay your hands on things. So I have a little container close by where I keep the offcuts of paper that are different colors. That way I can pull them out and use them. And I'm trying to start putting the materials I use the most closest to me. Uh, that's gonna be a, a quest that's not gonna stop until I kind of pin down some of my favorite things. For the adhesive layer on this, um, you know I love tacky glue, but I've been using this Jot glue for adhesive um, because we're going to have so many layers over the top of this i think it's going to stick just fine so let's get a good layer of adhesive on here and we're definitely going to need more i've already glued that down so i'm not going to go over the top of the pink bingo card with glue again but let's get all of this covered we'll go out to the edge and now let's start putting some color down and if we have places where we need to we can go back and add more glue underneath you know like here it looks like that edge needs some and under here i love using text as well and this booklet here has been a favorite one lately 
So we're just gonna pull a sheet out of this. It is a stock guide. So it's got all of these little numbers and it is from the, it's from 1971. Okay, this is pretty much dry. And you can see that I've picked out some colors of paint to match the collage. And I'm gonna just start putting some color down and just be spontaneous with this. Um, I don't wanna overpower it with these bright colors, but I am gonna get quite a bit on the page. And we're gonna use the brush. I like to use the brush to get up under areas where maybe the glue didn't really stick. That's kind of a, a random thing. It's, it's not really planned, so it will feel kind of organic when you do that. And then you can take, oops, I need water. I'm gonna use the brayer to put some of this down because it will add different texture. I'm gonna wipe some of this off because I want the flower to show, even though I've changed the color of it. That's okay though. Put a tiny bit of yellow and let's just pick something else to kind of spread this color around. You can use so many different things to spread the color. And if you feel like you have too much or you don't like it, take, take some of it off. I kind of feel like this is such a, a line here. I'm just gonna put some paint right across there. We haven't used the pink yet, but I'm gonna add some of that at a later step. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Okay, now what I wanna do is take this black watercolor pencil, which kinda needs to be sharpened, but we're not gonna worry about it too much. And I'm gonna do an outline for my face. And let's just do the shoulders. This does not have to be perfect got kind of a, oops, I tore the page. That's okay. You know, that happens, like I know that I don't have enough glue in some of these spots, but, but that's okay. And we're not gonna worry about um, the eyes or anything like that yet. I'm gonna go ahead, put a little glue under there. I'm gonna take my gesso now. Whoa, hello. I'm gonna take some out of the lid because apparently I wasn't thinking that it would be all under the lid, but that just makes complete sense. I probably got too much, but this is so that we can cover up all of this space that's covered in collage. This does not have to be perfect. You also don't have to use your finger. In fact, let's get to our brush so we can make it a little neater. I did get way too much, so, well, not way too much, but I got too much. So picking a little bit up and just putting it on my cloth over here. This has covered up the layers of paint and paper. It's gonna give us texture, uh, but it's gonna give us a surface that we can paint on and not, you know, we're gonna have an actual face that stands apart from everything. Now I wanna put a face color. I think I may try to mix some white and some of this uh, seashell pink, if I can get any out. Or actually this color is called Flash, but this is a really pink color. It's, um, I used it for the last collage. So maybe, maybe I'll use it, but just kind of tone it down a little bit. So let's just mix all this up there. That's not quite so, quite so dark pink. And of course, there are all different colors that can be flesh colors because we know there's not just one color of flesh. So let's go ahead and paint this. We're using acrylic paint. I have learned just from, from reading, from watching different artists, different channels, that with this type of, you know, with this mixed media, this is a layer where it's best if everything will work together. 
uh, like all oil, uh, not oil, uh, water-based, water-soluble things. You don't want oil or alcohol or anything um, because it's just permanent and it's it doesn't really doesn't really mix um, and move around and so it's okay if we've got you know some of these little areas aren't perfect like I said yesterday I love working with a soft watercolor pencil and people have their own style their own way of doing things. You will start finding out things that you like, things that feel comfortable to you. Um, I know this is still really wet, but that's okay. Ooh, there's a nice dark mark. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and dry this. I think this is pretty, I think it's dry enough at this point. So now we're going to do the outline for the face. And the eyes, uh, one of the things that I've read is that you want enough space between the eyes to be the size of an eye, if that makes sense. So you don't want the eyes too close together. And you can see this is still pretty damp. And I know I shouldn't dip that in water, but, but I'm going to. And it's like it's pulling up every bit of this. Okay, great. This brings a whole new meaning to scratching someone's eyes out. Oh my gosh. I've done something a little different this time. I just wanna see what happens. So I've wiped over this to remove some of the color. It wasn't drying that fast and I thought, well, you know, what's gonna happen? You can see where I pulled up see where I pulled up some of the paint and then I thought you know what I'm not I'm not doing this I apparently have a lot of glue and stuff right there I'm not gonna worry about it I shouldn't have pressed so hard This is one of the things I love, though, about doing things like this. We're going to learn every time we, we create something. And something I've learned from Jane Davenport is, you know, this lower lip, the deeper you make it, the fuller the lips are going to look. And that line in the center can have, you know, different shapes. Let's put a little bit of shading here, up here. And I really messed up her, her eye. Well, then let's just focus on this one. Let's go with this really, really deep red for the lips. And here, here. And we're going to go with the pink. And it's okay if it overlaps with some of this or the hair. I hope that if you're picking up anything here, you're uh, learning not to be afraid. Like if you totally mess something up, just, just keep going with it, if that's possible. Because we are not done. Sometimes I do like making just round circles for the cheeks, but then, you know, nobody's coloring really looks like that. And that's getting a little dark. Now, in order to try to fix some of this, I'm gonna dry this page. Okay, I did dry this. And then I'm gonna turn right around and add a little bit of water up here so I can get a darker line without tearing the paper. Maybe we can. It's really interesting. Jane Davenport has a book that's all about drawing faces. I bought that book a while back. I don't remember at this point. And uh, it's not something I keep out all the time. I have a lot of reference materials and I honestly don't read them like I should. There's just not enough hours in the day. There are not enough hours in the day. 
I had it out the other day and I was reading again just her thoughts about um, shapes of faces and where you place the eyes and you know the kind of character it ends up creating on the page it's everything everything matters and yet you don't want to get too caught up in something perfect I think what she was just trying to say is that if you get this look you know it could be because of this or that yeah I'm kind of liking her now somewhere I've got my um, here it is I've got this black neo color to uh, and you know what else we could do is just remember, just remember at this stage of things, everything that we're working with is water soluble. Things are still able to move around. Uh, since I've messed up this paper some with the pen, I'm gonna come back with some black acrylic paint and do her irises or uh, yeah, and then maybe just go across here, across the top. We could add a few little brush strokes to her, gave her kind of thick eyebrows, but that's okay. Well, maybe we should just switch over to thick eyebrows, almost like a Frida. Can we do that? That's kind of cool. Brushes can matter too. So where is my, whoa, hello. This brush is kind of fun. Don't want to overdo anything. This is another one that I try not to ever leave just sitting in the water. I have messed up a lot of brushes with bad habits. So you can use your fingers. And I think I want to come back and add more color here. Definitely more color here because we got a lot of black in there. And for her, I've been thinking about her, her dress, like what her dress is going to be. And I want to use some of this bright yellow. For the dress, I'm going to get some of the yellow with a brush. And I want to make, I kind of want like puffy sleeves. So the paint's going to be kind of thick. We could add just like a little bit of yellow up there. And while we're at it, let's put a little bit more right here. I really wish I hadn't covered up that flower, but it's okay. This is still kind of wet, so I'm not going to mess with it right now. Uh, but this does give me a chance to come back and work on the eye some more. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid you're going to mess up a face, okay? Um, don't be afraid to put in shading and, you know, blend it. It's okay. You need a little bit under here, over here, and more shading on this side of the face. I like the way that we've pulled up some of the, um, some of the paint. It looks to me almost like a brick wall or something, like, uh, like where graffiti or something was done. And let's define that line more. And then one of my favorite things is coming back and adding some white. Sometimes the colors you have on the page will just soak the white up and you have to go back and add it again, but that's okay. If you've been listening to my channel, you might have heard me say before that if something, if you don't like something, it could just mean it's not finished. So let's just put a little bit of white on the lips. I'm going to put some in the eye. Actually going to put some in the hair. Um, let's put some right there on the nose. And Just had the idea to put some dots on her dress. I noticed too that this line at the bottom of the eyes 
it's not always just perfectly black and you know there can be white above the eyes and something that you can do is put the whites into the eyes that's important Look at the color of the water at this point. <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, let's see, one last thing I'm gonna do on this page. I'm gonna put something over this spot. I know one of the main things I wanted was that pretty flower piece, but um, I kind of messed myself up with that. However, I have some maps that I recently purchased because I like to make uh, the map packs for my shop and I love the yellow in this. So I'm gonna put this here. And so this piece, of course, is not, this is not, this is not museum quality if we're talking about, you know, really trained and just awesome artists. I feel like I am learning so much every time I sit down to practice. Um, I wish her eyes, I had not put them so close together. I may add some more to this, but my main point in showing you this is just to go all the way through this. We could keep adding things. There's so much that we could continue to do. Um, I'm gonna let the page completely dry. I may come back and add some words. Now, you could finish it off at this point with a fixative. You could do uh, layers. You know, Mod Podge is an option, but again, it can be sticky. So I feel like you would want to cover it with something else. I have this uh, Grumbacher workable fixative. This is supposed to add a workable matte finish, but I want something that is permanent. You could probably use a varnish that you could paint on. I used to use those on my oil pa uh, acrylic paintings. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave this. I guess you could even use something like a... Uh, Distress Glaze, apply over artwork with finger, buff away excess with a dry paper towel. I do like this. I've been using this on some of my um, acrylic work and it takes away that chalky finish. So we may come back with this, but I just wanted to hopefully share some inspiration with you today. Keep practicing, do not give up, and play in your art journals. The more you add, the more fun they're gonna be. And even if you like really don't like something when you first do it, you may come back to it later and say, oh, I love this. All right, bye for now.